Admiral's Log The tides of war are fickle indeed, for just as victory seemed within our grasp, the very foundation of our adversaries crumbled beneath their feet. In a twist of fate as sudden as it is perplexing, the once mighty Japanese empire has fallen, its demise swift and seemingly inexplicable. As I stand upon the deck of my flagship, gazing out across the now tranquil seas, I cannot help but feel a sense of disbelief mingled with suspicion. How could a nation as powerful and proud as Japan have been brought to its knees in a matter of months? Was it truly our naval prowess alone that sealed their fate? Or were there unseen forces at play, manipulating the strings of fate from behind the curtain of war. The whispers of doubt grow louder with each passing moment, echoing the turmoil within my own heart. Could it be that we have been misled, that our true enemy lies not across the sea but within our own midst? The thought is a troubling one, cast in a shadow of uncertainty over the righteousness of our cause. And yet, even as doubt gnaws at the edges of my resolve, I cannot deny the truth of our achievements. The victories we have won, the battles we have fought and won, they are real tangible proof of our strength and determination. But still, the question remains, who or what truly brought about the downfall of the Japanese Empire? As I ponder these mysteries, I am reminded of the ancient wisdom passed down through the generations. Know thy enemy, but also know thyself. It is a lesson I have taken to heart, a guiding principle in my quest for justice and revenge. But now, as the dust settles and the smoke of the battle clears, I find myself faced with a new challenge, a new enemy to confront, the specter of doubt and uncertainty that haunts the corridors of my mind. And though the path ahead may be shrouded in darkness, I shall not falter, for I am Admiral Liu Xiang Wei, and I will stop at nothing to uncover the truth, no matter where it may lead. Hey guys, still here and welcome back. It's episode 4. I thought I had taken down the Japanese. It turns out, I did. And then they came back. So what are these mysterious powers keeping the Japanese in power, and then out of power, and then back into power? We're gonna have to face the real enemy. Find out who that is. That's gonna be the new goal of this campaign. Alright, so the Japanese are back. Let's see what they got. Um, oh, here. North Hokkaido. 350 million? It is a very small area, really. It's not that important strategically. It's not that important economically. As a, a minor army. Um, oh, there's something else happening here. I think they're... Well, they might retake South Honshu. That is fairly likely. That would be a very sizable economic boon to them. In the meanwhile, I am trying to gobble up as much territory as possible, taking over here. This is the uh, Okinawa Islands, and over here we're looking at Formosa. Both of these are looking really good, but I was a little late getting to the party here because I was doing an invasion elsewhere, so this is going to take me another eight months. Over here, thankfully, not as much, and it looks to be quite quick. Strategically, and again, economically, not very viable. Now, what I found very interesting is that even though the Japanese have this little stretch of land, that does not seem to deter them from doing... I don't know, an economy that seems to be unreasonably big for what they have. Their economic growth is 158% or 8% per year. What the hell? I'm very interested in seeing how well this is going to change, right? Like 29.8 billion. One month later, are we going to cross 50 billion in a month? Are we going to cross 50 billion? Yeah, fine. They keep attacking me, these ungoverned territories, that's whatever was left of Japan, but they need 113,000 tons. I've deployed the entire navy, and I'm not really in a position to actually send these guys out. 
Anyway, they have also taken North Honshu. Oh, that was where the uprising was, not South Honshu. Okay, so it was 29.8 billion. It's now 40 billion. Wow. They're even building five ships. Time to increase the tensions. So if they're back, um, that means that Japan is not strictly defeated. It's not strictly defeated. We're going to have to go after these guys again. Now, my technology is a little bit behind, so I'm now pumping everything I have into tech. Um, I'm also still boosting my transport capability, as well as doing crew training, but that's not really something I need to focus on. I'm also building a bunch of ships. Um, none of them for me. <laughs> the only ships that I'm still building are the ones that are still stuck in limbo, because everything else, battle cruisers, battleships, they're all going to Sweden and Portugal and Greece. That's what I'm building things for. And as much as I would like to suspend any additional construction to speed up my shipbuilding, I can't. Thankfully, the light cruiser Zhu Zhao is coming out in a month, so that should free up transport capa or shipbuilding capability a bit. Now, let's give it a couple of months. Let's see what the Japanese are going to do. The Japanese never have a dull moment. Unrest became uncontrollably high, and the government's been overthrown. Um... <laughs> Didn't you just reform the, the Japanese Empire? They did take South Honshu. They didn't actually lose anything doing that. And now they're... Pro <laughs> wow! <laughs> the guts on these guys. Now they're provoking me? Are you sure about that? Empire of Japan, 55 billion. More tensions, more better. Okay, so I have taken the islands of Okinawa. That's nice. Let's send the rest of the fleet to, hmm, let's see, Kyushu is not that valuable, 460, 700 million, ooh, Southwest Korea, that looks like a nice place. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to spawn any invasion, but, well, I'm willing to give it a good try. North Korea is about a billion... Northwest Korea is about a billion. South Hokkaido, not that interesting. And if it does come to a war, they might do better than I do there. When it comes to my logistics, it's 39%. That's actually a heck of a lot better than what I've been seeing in the Russian campaign. Um, as for the other guys, 100%, 100%. Naval prestige, minus, minus, minus. Ooh, Germany, highly respected. Look at you. Minus, minus. The French are respected, and the British are disrespectful. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, my economy is actually not doing that bad. It's bigger than Spain. It's about half of that of the US. And I'm growing 10%, but the US is growing 15%. 11 point... Yeah, we're not catching up to that. Even if I'm able to take this place, which will grant me a nice boost in the economy, we're not quite getting there. Um, I don't believe the Japanese have anything else up for grabs. Should I be worried about another war? No, not really. I can try and provoke the British, or maybe the Germans. Take some territory off the Germans here. I'm sure they won't mind. Well, they might, but... Ooh. Did you say oil? 1.6 million barrels. German New Guinea looks ripe for the taking. Let's provoke... No, we're going to provoke the Japanese. That's the primary mission. That's the primary mission. I don't care much for the Germans at the moment. I first want to take as much territory away from the Japanese as possible. There's some weird things going on in this game. You remember how I took Formosa? Well, I was working on that. And then the Japanese... Sorry, the Americans went mine. They sent... One battle cruiser and two heavies, and they now decided that this is theirs. I know that that's how the U.S. generally operates, but this is a game, guys. Like, why are we getting in this in the game? Uh, in the meanwhile, Japanese definitely reforming their core provinces, and their economy is doing very well, although they have some growth issues. In the meanwhile, next stop for me, Southeast Korea. It is going to take a bit more of the fleet to really get this to be a success. So I'm very eager to wrap up this invasion. 
if it will continue, and I'm not even sure it will, because I'm not sure how the US suddenly rolled up there and decided that this was going to be their bit, their territory all of a sudden. Because, yeah, I don't know, am I suddenly finding the US? What is going to happen next? Because I am not anywhere near hostile to the US. So there's definitely some weird shit going on in the game. And at this point, I'm not convinced that it's Brother Monroe's mod. I'm thinking it's just the core game that's going, well, a little nuts. But at least the effects are fairly spectacular. It's about time to start building an additional ship. I'm finally working through completing the rest of these heavy cruisers that I ordered uh, a while ago. I'm not even sure when I ordered them, but the original design is from 1907. Once these ships are completed, it's the Canyon, the Killzone 1123, the 38 Tails, the Robin Lush, and the Jason Winchell. Uh, all of these are patrons or channel members. If you want to get your name in here as well, just become a patron or a channel member. Um, these guys are going to be joining the fleet, but we now have something bigger. We finally have the Dreadnought 2 and the Experimental Dreadnought 1. The current design that I have is displacing 15,000 tons, which is less than the Battlecruiser 24, but I can probably build something substantially larger than that, because my shipyards can handle a bunch more. It really comes down to how much the hull can handle. So we have Dreadnought 4, up to 39,500 tons, or the Experimental Dreadnought. Ah, <laughs> I see great options here. It's not the biggest. This thing displaces 30,500. Um, it is doing 22.8. It's, uh, it's actually slightly faster. Resistance is 81.5, resistance 65. I'm going to use this one. I think this is going to be an interesting ship. Now, this is going to be the Enigma Hun class ship. Again, a patron member, I believe. This ship has a lot of casemates. I think it's going to be... 3-inch works? 4-inch does not. Okay. What do you mean galleys are outdated? What do you mean galleys are outdated? We got, we got a galley right here. Will this work? I don't know. Um, with the Brother Monroe mod that I'm working with, the, the Dreadnought's Improvement Project, I'm not so sure all of these 3 inches are going to do great things. Because spewing a whole bunch of HE at a target, at least right now, doesn't really seem to do that much. So whether or not this ship is actually going to be capable of inflicting a whole lot of damage with those things, I'm not sure. But it will look spectacular. That's also quite valuable. Now, economically, this is not going to be a cheap ship. Um, not to run, not to build. But that's fine. I'm going to increase AP. I'm going to go with capitalistic shells. We're going to go with... What's Camp Ballistic going to give me? If I, let's say, try and mitigate my flash fire chance, it's currently 3-1, it's not too bad. What are these guns capable of? At, let's say, 5,000 meter range, I can pen 0.2 inches with HE. Hmm. With AP, I can pen half an inch. But that is, what's the modifier that I have on? 190%. Yeah, we're not quite there yet. We're not quite at 100, we're at 110. So I need to change that because I think I was building a different ship back when I set this to 190. So this should change this thing significantly and might make life on destroyers very uncomfortable. Yeah, I can pen about 0.7 inches with AP. So it's uh, it's an improvement, but marginal. Hmm... I think it's going to have to be HE. If I go for high capacity HE, more chances of setting fires. But yeah, I'm not so sure if that will work. I'm going to run with this as is, because I'm curious to see how well the HE is going to work. But by the looks of it, it'll just inflict no damage. It'll pen nothing. Which in case of a destroyer might work, or an unarmored superstructure, in case you ever run into those. Outside of that, I'm not so sure. If it does not work, I can always switch them later. Now, this ship also has room for some fairly sizable casemates in the bow. Ideally, also in the stern, because this has the potential of making your ship bow heavy. Thankfully, we're actually quite balanced. 
Ooh, you can put the funnel up there. Even with the funnel up here, the ship's not unbalanced. Probably because all of these guns are offsetting the displacement that the tall funnel creates. Okay. Now, main guns wise, we got the Mark III for the 13 inchers. I generally don't even consider anything below Mark III. So this is a pretty easy pick. I don't really need a whole lot of guns in the bow. Normally, I would not be too happy with this particular design because I'd go, well, you know, the problem with this is that I cannot chase an enemy. But then again, this ship just screams broadside. Especially considering that you can put the funnel up there, so you don't need room for that. Which means... More guns... More better. <laughs> it's a gun platform. It's a sheer it's just sheer transport of guns. That's basically all that it does. Um yeah. If it's gonna do that in a broadside manner, I suspect we might need some better capabilities of defending the ship against all of these incoming shells. Um she's heavily protected already. Quite quite good. I'm thinking dual barrels might fit a little better. With a simple reason being, that's going to give me a little less weight. Well, slightly more accuracy. And still have the capability of going broadside against DDs. But it is definitely one of the weirder weirder designs that I've run with. Um, let's put that over there. Set the centerline 13 inches. One there, one there, one there. One there. And these things can free spin. Which means they can quickly acquire a target on the other side of the ship. Very valuable. If I can do that here too. Yeah. So this is beautiful. This ship is going to be capable of swinging those turrets over very swiftly. Well, relatively swiftly. Turret rotation speed is... Wow, it's actually really good. It's four and a half degrees per second. So let's say your guns are pointing that side towards that uh, warehouse over there because you're targeting something over there. It's going to take you not that much time to swing the mains over and engage something on the other side. That would imply that the ship has kind of positioned herself poorly because she's now engaging things on both sides. But all of these three injures, they kind of... <laughs> they kind of invite you to do that, don't they? They kind of invite you. So... Considering that this might be a bit more of a brawler, I'm going to put a lot of armor on her. 18-inch main belt. Um, ideally, I'd get into range a little faster, but that's not something I can really do at the moment. Because this ship is not fast at 22.5 knots. Her range is very good. Let's go for induced. Give me a bit better engine efficiency. And what else? Oh, flash fire has to get addressed. Because if you're going to be taking this much fire, try not to blow up. That would be greatly appreciated. There we go. Two powder. 5.5. As for range, if I can increase the barrel length on these things, 12% gives me a bit more range. So we're now looking at 8.8. 8.8 as opposed to... Six, uh, sorry, 7.6, I'm looking at AP. So you're getting a bit more range. Reload, 3.8 seconds. And now it is 5 seconds. Oh, that's fine. So we're going to go broadside with these guns. Hold on, can I upsize them? Yeah, sure, it'll make the ship overweight, but it'll also up the pen on these things. It'll up the pen, it'll up the amount of damage, and it'll up the range. Reload, 7 seconds. Take that additional barrel length off. And now we're looking at five and a half second reload. We're still getting some pretty, pretty okay accuracy. It's just gonna be volume of fire. That's what the ship is about, volume of fire. Uh, give me a 17 inch main belt and an, another five inch inner belt. And we're very, very much approaching the edges of what I can do. The ship is going to be a little fragile when it comes to her ability to take hits on the deck. Like she, did, she generally doesn't have it. She can't really take hits there. So hopefully that will not happen. 
I think this is going to be a very fun ship to use. Oh, I might need to give her a bit more of that and a bit less fuel. Yeah, that's fine. I can still make it to Japan and back, which is what this thing is going to be for. And I still have more crew. Let's see if I can then add some more armor. Uh, let's say make it 8 and 8 and 4. 5 inches of superstructure. Give me a 7 inch main belt. And we're overweight. Uh, 6.5. 6.5. Nope. Fine. Be like that. There. 5.9 inch main belt. Inner belt, that is. So if something pens the main belt, this is going to be the next layer of defense that will have to go through. And considering that if it penned this, it'll have lost a lot of kinetic energy, and then it's going to have 50% um, less, and it'll still have to pen another 5.9 inches. So this thing, the Enigma Hunt, should be very capable of defending itself. Forgot that I had a bit more displacement. Maybe I can still get like 6, 2, 6, 3. Yeah, it's fine. 6-3 is cool. Okay, the Enigma Hun, aka the Modern Galley. A bunch of months have passed, so let me catch you up to speed. I am still working on several invasions. I have taken Northwest Korea, I've taken Southeast Korea, and there is a uh, sizable force walking from Manchuria into Northeast Korea, which would add another billion to my economy. Unfortunately, Southwest Korea invasion did not succeed yet, but there's time. China is patient, and considering that I have the rest, this is only a matter of time. We're also working on this, and this is uh, a bit more shaky. This is Kyushu, uh, part of the core islands of Japan, and Japan is doing okay. I mean, they have taken four of their core provinces back. Their economy is doing okay, <laughs> 73 billion. They've recovered quite nicely. And I'm still growing very quickly. I'm still at 10% a year. Uh, my economy is doing very nicely with the very high transport capacity. And that does definitely help. Now, technology has also advanced a lot. I haven't really been able to keep up the 100% rating, but 75% at least keeps me within average technology bounds. So I'm no longer behind on the times which is something that definitely tried to kill me when I was playing the Russian campaign. What I have noticed is that some ship designs are starting to become outdated. Uh, the Tang Shan, it's a battle cruiser, is definitely a capable ship. It's proven that, but the design can no longer be built. Um, these Tang Shans, I mean, yes, I can build one if I really want to, but the, the whole design of the Tang Shan is outdated. So it's time to replace her with a new design. There's not likely any combat in this episode, I'm sorry for that, but there's just nobody to fight at the moment. Japan is still trying to get on its feet, and Europe is, um, well, a little tied up being Europe and fighting each other. Not my problem. Now, when it comes to battlecruisers, I have two flavors. I have Battlecruiser 2 and the Large Cruiser. Large Cruiser is not that. It's not that large. What I'm looking for is a battle cruiser of the 2 variant, because it is capable of operating at a maximum of 28 knots, which would make these ships very capable of intercepting, um, let's say, well, let's say I'm going to use this as the ideal battle cruiser. Like, outrun anything you cannot outfight, and outfight anything you cannot outrun. So, a battleship is something I can outrun, but not likely outfight. Whereas a heavy cruiser is something I need to keep up with if I want to kill it. So if I want to outfight it. Now the Enigma Hun is a 30,000 ton warship. Uh, this thing does not need to be that enormous. I am going to make her suited for speed. And a sleeker hull definitely helps with that. Comes at a price. Your shooting platform is less stable. Your water resistance is less. Which means that in order to get to the same level of speed, you don't need the same level of horsepower. Uh, I might be able to up that a bit. Yeah, 26, 460 is fine. Let's give him standard crew quarters. Um, these guys are going to get auxiliary engines, better steering. Um, yeah, balanced rudder. I'm going to keep him up to speed. 
we're gonna go with Krupp Armor, Double Hull Bottom, Reinforced Bulkheads, all the Anti-Floods, and the Citadel. Anti-Torpedo Blister, I think is gonna be useful. I have found that at least in the fights that I've done so far, the battles are short-ranged, and as such, a Torpedo Blister can save your ship. If you get torpedoed, well, I guess you wish you had one. Um, as for towers, I have the enhanced tower. Sorry, and the advanced tower two enhanced. Um, this is the alternative. Um, the advanced tower two versus the enhanced. Yeah, I think this is definitely beneficial. It's the first time I'm seeing the night vision stat over there. I didn't know that was a factor, but okay. I guess they might have added that. Unfortunately, no coincidence rangefinder yet, so we're going to have to go with stereoscopic, which is not ideal for the type of fighting that I have in mind for this ship. It boosts your longer range accuracy, whereas I'm not so sure if my guns are going to be that accurate. For now, I'll keep it. If I find that the ship does not perform, I can refit her. Now, firepower. Let's have a look. The ship has, of course, the opportunity to mount side-mounted turrets. I'm not so sure if that's something that I really want to do. Simply because it means that you're basically wasting half your firepower. I might want to use those housings for smaller guns. Guns capable of eliminating cruisers at a hurry. Something like that. Now, it looks like I'm going to have to find a second spot for a funnel somewhere. Because without that, my engine efficiency is not good enough. Okay. Let's see. Main firepower. I have access to the 15 and the 16 inch gun, but they're Mark 1. The 14 inches are Mark 2, so it's essentially automatically disqualified. Anything below Mark 3 is something I just don't consider. because I don't like the gun. Now, this ship um, is not strictly the same as the Enigma Hun. It is not going to get the same level of firepower. It is going to get more 8 inches and more 6 inches to deal with the smaller ships. The Enigma Hunt class might be able to do that with the 8 inches and the 13 inches, but she's not fast. She's only doing 22 knots. This is pretty much my interceptor. So let's have the ship have a bow turret and a stern turret, and then maybe a pretty sizable amount of, or at least a sizable 8 inches. Sizable 8 inches. Thing is pretending to be able to turn but it's essentially not now the reason why i'm picking eight inches as opposed to nine inches is because if it's a nine inch gun it is considered a primary and all primary weapons are linked if you pick a target this is going to engage with all guns it's not a bad thing but i might want to engage a battleship with one set of guns and have a cruiser be dealt with with another set of guns so that's my reasoning for going with these smaller secondaries I can still upsize them if I really want to, and with that be able to turn them into 8.9 inches. So you're essentially still getting a 9 inch gun. It's just slightly, slightly smaller. As for the firepower that this ship has, let's see, my armor quality is still 110, so that's fine. I needed to be able to pen, let's say, up to a heavy cruiser or battle cruiser. With this capability in mind, I'm not so sure if 10,000 meters and 13 inches of pen is going to be enough. If I give this ship heavy shells, I'm looking at 14.3, is definitely an improvement. Now, I'm not willing to get a very high flash fire chance. So, I'm going to have to go with something that is relatively safe without having too high of a flash fire. I can increase the barbettes. That also pushes down your flash fire at the expense of having your ship be heavier. Now, considering that the ship essentially has no armor, that has me a little concerned. So let's say 10 inch, uh, 7, 7. I'm going to keep her afloat, but it doesn't need to be a full size tank. It doesn't have to be able to do that. I might want to slow her down one knot to give her just a Bit, bit more capable. Oh, actually, let's reduce the range. There we go. Um, give her a bit more room for secondaries. Because I wouldn't be surprised if she has... Yeah. On the tower, if she has some room for casemates. Now, these are only 2 inches. I'm going to see if I can upsize those to 2.9s. Because with that, you're going to be just doing better against 
pretty much every target. Fortunately, this is possible, and the range is now, and I'm looking at the HE, about six, let's say five, maybe four and a half kilometers effectively. If something approaches to that range, I will have messed up, because this ship is um, unlikely to be able to survive a close encounter with the destroyer. It's simply not going to spot the torpedoes. It's, um, it's going to have a really rough time. As for the torpedoes I'm using, I have fast torpedoes, 22 inches, and with those I can deliver, let's say, a last second um, problem-solving <laughs> torpedo, because this is going to deliver a lot of damage very quickly up to an unsuspecting target. Well, no, actually leave out the unsuspecting, because if you get to 5 kilometers, I think they might be expecting you by then. As for my HE shells, I'm currently sporting these HE shells, which can do a little bit of damage, but I'm not looking to set fires. So we're going to go with Cap Ballistic. And with this, I have the option of going with 13 inches, either with going against an armored target, 14 inches of pen at 10,000 meter range, or about 5 inches, which means I can probably blow a light cruiser out of the water at a pretty decent range. I think that's pretty much the ship. I don't want to have her get incredibly expensive. She's 50 million cheaper than the Enigma Hunt class, so that's fine. And um, I think the, the shells, the type of ammo is fine. These things are sporting 8 inches that can pen. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. See, these things essentially work the same thing as the 13 inches here. The same um, th method of thinking. The HE for lighter armed targets, but in case of the 8 inches, that's likely a destroyer. Maybe a light cruiser if you get particularly lucky with the cruiser's awful design. As for bigger targets, heavy cruisers, maybe some heavier armored light cruisers, those AG, uh, sorry, the AP shells should be coming in very nicely. I think that's pretty much it for this ship. I don't think... I can really house any more turrets on this ship. Sure enough, I can put this thing farther behind and make room for a barbette. That might be valuable, but it will come at a price because I'm also supersizing the superstructure. Oh, sorry, not the superstructure. I'm supersizing uh, the size of the citadel. Still, considering that I want this ship to be flexible, that is something that I'm going to do. Because I want flexibility on this ship. I wanna whoops, I don't wanna put a whole tower on there. Oh, it's too small. I'm hoping to put another eight incher on there, but I might make it a fiver. Just to get like a, an intermediate threat level turret. Put a five inch dual barrel on there. Like that. The only problem is I'm now way over and my turrets don't turn fully anymore. And this has to sit, like, right next to the main tower. Push this in as much as possible. Is that going to turn? Really? <laughs> no, it is not. This should turn, though. The game might not like it, but it should turn. Now, where am I going to sacrifice some armor? I'm thinking for an aft belt. Because I don't have that much, but it also means there's not that much to get. Let's reduce the superstructure armor a bit, but that... Wow. That barely left a mark. Uh, reduce the inner belt a bit. Now I need to find about 20 tons. I'm going to increase the conning tower armor and reduce the main belt armor. There. So with this ship, I pretty much have a cruiser hunter. It's capable of reaching a good speed, catching up with cruisers, and either hit them with a 13-incher with HE really hard, um, alternatively 8-inchers, 5-inchers, or should the get, battle get a little closer, 2.9-inchers. If I want to, let's say, exceed expectations with this ship and come up against a battleship and have to take that down, I can still send a torpedo greeting card. So I have options, and that's what I like with my ships. As for a name, it's going to be the Aura class of ships, named after one of my patrons. Now, 
I think that we have a, a good selection here. We got the Aura class, we got the Enigma Hun, and we have the Heavy Cruisers, which have proven, well, not much. Um, I don't think I've ever fought with these ships, so I'm not sure how capable they are. But at the same time, there isn't really a better hull available. The Heavy Cruiser hulls that I have, I don't really like them. So I'm not that much eager to start replacing all of the Heavy Cruisers. I mean, I got this cruiser, which has casemates, it's fine. We've got the semi-armored cruiser, and we got the armored cruiser. I guess I could turn the semi-armored cruiser into, let's say, a mini battle cruiser, because that's pretty much what it is. But right now, I don't want to start replacing all of the heavies, because I do have a, a pretty hefty amount of those. So I think that will be it for my ship design for now. And that is also going to be it for the episode for now. I think the plot is thickening. Japan is back. But if it's up to me, if it's up to the Admiral, they will not be around for very long. So may the tensions increase, may the Marines be ready, and may the invasions continue. I shall see you guys soon for the next episode.